This video is on solving quadratics. We're going to be solving by square roots again. So in a previous video, I explained that when solving by square roots, there should always be two answers. We have to make sure that when we're doing the inverse of squaring, which is square rooting, we end up with a plus or minus on our value that we do. So when I took the square root from this side to here, I had to put the plus or minus on my value not the expression but my value so that's why square root of 4 is plus or minus 2 if I were just taking the square if I just said square root of 4 if I just wanted that not an equal sign if it was just what is the square root of 4 it would just be a positive 2 but because I want to know what squared gives me 4 I have to have positive 2 squared gives me 4 and negative 2 squared gives me 4 as well so the directions here say solve the following by using square roots. Because it says square roots, I must use this method. Some of these are factorable, which means that I could solve these by factoring. Some of these I could. But because it says solve by using square roots, I specifically want to use square roots. And if it says just solve, and it doesn't tell you which method to use, you can use solve by square roots when there's only one x in the problem. I could factor this problem and still solve it a different way, but I want to use square roots, which means I'm just going to solve this equation as a normal equation. So when I'm solving by square roots, I'm doing sad math, which is order of operations backwards, PEMDAS backwards. So I have to add and subtract away from the x first. So on this one, I want to add the 180 over, so I have 5x squared equals a positive 180. So I've added and subtracted. Now I want to multiply or divide away from the x. So I have my 5 attached to it, so I want to divide both sides by 5. So I end up with x squared equals 180 divided by 5 is 36. So I've multiplied or divided away. Now I can focus on the exponent. I have a squared. So I want to do the inverse of that, which is the square root. And this is when I, I have to make sure, because I went across an equal sign, I'm solving. So when I take the square root, I have to put a plus or minus with this value. So I'll have the square root and the square are inverses of each other, so that's why they go away. So I'll have x equals... I have the plus or minus here, then I have the square root of 36 is 6. I've gotten rid of the parentheses, or there were no parentheses, so I'm done with sad map. I will start back over. My x is already alone, so my x, I've already solved this. This is done. So I can write my answer as two different things. I have x is equal to plus or minus 6. I can write it like this, plus or minus 6. Or I can write it out as two different answers, as in x is equal to the positive 6 value and x is equal to the negative 6 value. So I can write it out as both ways. Either way is fine, as long as I have simplified everything. So this is a perfectly acceptable way of writing it. These are the two actual answers you get. So you have a positive 6 and a negative 6. What that tells us, again, when you're solving quadratics, you're still finding the x-intercepts. This is still finding the x-intercepts, the roots, the zeros, the solutions. So this is telling me that my two x-intercepts will be at 6, 0 and negative 6, 0. This tells me the same thing. I have one at positive 6 and one at negative 6. So I have the same answers. On this next problem, number 2, again, because it says square roots, I do not have to have it equal to zero to do this. I can, I'm just solving. I'm solving for that x value. If it said to factor it, I could actually bring this over and factor this problem. So we have to make sure we understand what the directions say before we even begin the problem. Because it says solve by square roots, I'm just doing sad map, back, uh, PEMDAS backwards. So I'm gonna get the x by itself. So I, I don't have anything to add or subtract away, but I can multiply or divide. I have that 3 times, so I want to divide both sides by 3, and we'll get x squared equals 8. 
x squared equals 8. So now I have to take the exponent and get rid of the exponent by taking the square root because that is the inverse of a square. So I'll have x equals, again, since I'm taking the square root of a value, I have to put plus or minus, then I have the square root of 8. Now, the square root of 8 does need to be simplified. So the square root of 8, I can't get x by, x is already by itself, so that means that I'm going to be done. So my answers, I have to simplify the square root of 8 to get my final answer. I'm going to write it as together first. I'm going to have x equals plus or minus. The square root of 8 is, it's going to be square root of 4 times square root of 2. Square root of 4 is 2 times the square root of 2. So this is my actual answer, and I can separate them as x equals 2 square root of 2 and x equals negative 2 square root of 2. So these are my two answers, 2 square root of 2 and negative 2 square root of 2. We have two solutions. They are irrational numbers, so this problem actually would not have been uh, able to be solved by factoring. It was factorable but you couldn't solve by factoring. We could factor out a GCF of 3, but that would be it. Next problem. Again, this actually looks like that the example problem from the very first one. I just want to get my x by itself. This looks very similar to vertex form, except it's not equal to 0, but that's okay. I just want to add and subtract away first. So I can't touch my parentheses, so I can add the 4 over. So I have two parentheses, 2x plus 1 parentheses squared equals, I want to add the 4 over to get 10. Now I want to divide away. So I want to divide both sides by 2. Now this inside the parentheses has a 2 as well, but I cannot touch that because it's inside the parentheses. I can only focus on the outside of it. So this 2 on the outside is what will cancel out. So we'll have 2x plus 1 in parentheses still, squared is equal to 5. So that's multiplication division. Now we can go to the exponent, which is that squared. I want to take the square root, square root. So on the left-hand side, because I'm getting rid of the square, I'm going to have the 2x plus 1 is equal to because this is a value, I'm, I'm going over the equal sign, I have to have that plus or minus, and I'll have the square root of 5. So I've gotten rid of the parentheses, because when I got rid of the square, it took the parentheses with it. Now I have to start back over and add and subtract away from the x. And on this one, I can, because I still have stuff with it. Now, on this case, it would be very difficult to separate them into two different ones, like we did here. So I'm actually going to keep it all together into one answer to make it look like this. So if you watched the previous video when I was explaining how to keep it one answer, when I add and subtract away, anything I add and subtract away, I want to put before the plus or minus. So on this one, I need to subtract the one over. So when I subtract the one over, I should have 2x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 5. Because the square root of 5 cannot simplify, I want to leave it like that. And then we have to, again, get x by itself, so I have to divide by 2. Now, I have to divide the entire expression by 2. So our final answer will actually be x equals. I'm going to have this entire expression, negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 5. I'm going to have it, all of this is over 2 because I cannot simplify the negative 1 over 2 and I cannot simplify the square root of 5 over 2 so this would be our final answer. If I could simplify part of it, I would. So if I could have simplified the negative 1 over 2, I would have. I would have tried to make it smaller or if I could simplify the square root of 5 over 2, I would have. But since that one cannot be simplified further, that would be your final answer and you would actually leave it as this answer instead of separate it into two different answers. If you were going to separate it into two different answers, the two answers would be negative 1 plus the square root of 5 all over 2, and then negative 1 minus the square root of 5 all over 2. 
the plus or minus is what separates the two different answers. So everything will stay the same, except on one of them, it'll be plus, and on the other one, it'll be minus. Very similar to up here. I would have x equals negative 3 plus the 2, and then x equals negative 3 minus the 2. The numbers stay the same, it's just that the plus or minus is what changes them. So this is how we would write our final answer, though, since nothing can be simplified.